Remove the product head on the drive end by rotating it clockwise when viewed from driven end to disengage it from the locking lugs. The drive end head must be extracted from the top or bottom of the pedestal once it has been disengaged from the cylinder. Place the head on a table or other stable work surface for maintenance. Inspect the product tube inner surface visually after the head and shaft have been removed. First, visually inspect the tube inner surface with a flashlight directed down the length of the tube from both the non-drive and the driven ends of the cylinder assembly. Another tube inspection technique is to reach into the tube at both non-drive and drive ends with your arm and run your fingernail down the length of the tube at the 12, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock positions to determine the severity of a groove. If your fingernail gets hung up in a groove, the tube should be carefully monitored and sent to SPX Flow for a formal inspection and disposition. The tube should have a smooth surface finish. If you observe scoring, gouging, and roughness, then replacement or refurbishment by SPX Flow can be considered and or arranged. When the surface of the plating is damaged or worn through from chipping or flaking, it may be re-chromed to original specifications by SPX Flow. For stainless tubes without chroming, inspect the tube surface for shallow score marks, gouges, or roughness. Minimal wear previously described can be taken out by honing the tube and then polishing. The grooving condition will only get worse over time, so frequent inspections will detect potential issues that can be addressed right away. Check to ensure that all supply lines to the unit are closed, locked, and tagged out and make sure that the entire unit is purged of fluids. Remove the heads and shaft as described earlier. Remove locking latch and hardware holding the front cover. Remove eight 3 8 inch bolts that hold the removable tube to the jacket. Take four jack bolts and thread into the B-holes. The B-holes are located at the 12, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock locations. Do not tighten. Using an X pattern, gradually tighten the bolts to withdraw the tube from the jacket. Considerable effort may be needed to overcome any stickiness. Once the jacket side double O-rings are visible, the jack bolts can be removed. Pull the tube out of the jacket assembly from the non-driven end. It is recommended to have another person holding the inside of the product tube from the drive end during the initial removal process and then again upon final tube withdrawal. Also, consider marking the tube and jacket so that the tube can be reinstalled in the same jacket and not inadvertently installed into another rotator cylinder assembly. If the tube does not start to pull away from the jacket as the bolts are tightened, Stop and make sure the product head on the drive end is removed. Place a block of wood across the drive end of the tube and apply pressure to force the tube opposite the drive end. When the tube is loose, use the bolts to complete the removal process. If the tube cannot be removed, contact an SPX Flow service representative. Remove non-drive and drive-end O-rings and clean the O-ring grooves on the outer diameter of the product tube prior to installing new jacket side O-rings. Lubricate and install new jacket side O-rings on the product tube. Different size O-rings on non-drive versus drive ends. Next, wipe down the exterior of the product tube to remove any scale or buildup. If the product tube is a BWS version, make sure to replace the packing gland. See Votator 2 O&M Manual. Inspect the jacket cylinder interior and wipe out all dirt and impurities. 
If O-ring sealing surfaces on the jacket cylinder are coated with debris, clean with a Scotch-Brite pad along the perimeter, then lubricate O-ring sealing surfaces inside the jacket. Insert the product tube into the jacket cylinder from the non-drive end. The support pins on the heat tube should be at the 5 o'clock and 7 o'clock positions during installation. Push the product tube into the cylinder slowly with assistance on the drive end to guide the tube into place to avoid cutting the jacket side O-rings. Insert two jack bolts 180 degrees apart and thread them into the bolt holes designated for the 3 8 inch bolts. Tighten these jacket bolts so that the last jacket side O-ring is partially seated and remove both jacket bolts. Thread the 8 3 8 inch bolts prepped with never seize through the flange of the heat exchanger tube into the jacket cylinder. Tighten all bolts in a crossing pattern until the tube is snugged down to the jacket cylinder. Use a torque wrench to tighten all bolts to 240 inch pounds over 20 foot pounds of torque. Install the front cover with the drain hole slot at the 6 o'clock position. Apply anti-seize to the three bolts used to secure the front cover and attach the latch hardware. Tighten all three bolts to secure the front stainless steel cover. To order genuine replacement parts or tools, contact your authorized SPX Flow sales representative or visit www.spxflow.com/wcb for more information.